Hey life science enthusiasts, welcome once again to Biotechnica YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about the top 10 most important topics to study from developmental biology. Yes, that's the unit 5 of CSI net syllabus. Let's quickly go through which all topics and subtopics you need to know definitely to answer at least 90, 80 to 90% of the questions that come in your exam paper. I'll be also focusing on what type of questions are generally asked from these topics. The first one to keep in mind is basic terms and terminologies of development. Terms such as potency, commitment, uh, differentiating terms like specification, determination, differentiation, what are the different concepts involved in these techniques, types of specifications that is autonomous, conditional, uh, sensitial specification which all organisms undergo these type of specifications and what is the basis of these specifications different you should be able to differentiate between these types and also what are their other names like regulative uh, development or regulative speci specification or mosaic uh, indeterminate uh, specification indeterminate so these sub terms must also be known to you properly Terms such as induction, competence, induction also there is regional basis of induction, genetic basis of induction or you can also say uh, this reciprocal induction is there, uh, some, uh, something called as instructive induction, permissive induction, different types can be asked in question. Also the competence, example you can take islands induction, how the cells are competent to it, which all factors they must possess. So these are the first set of terms which directly come in the question cytoplasmic determinants and uh, in case of insects if you are having some morphogenic gradients then how is the specification done according to the gradient of morphogen ensure that you know all about them so what type of questions can be asked from here as I said direct definition and concept based you will get some true or false statements which can be really confusing so in case these are uh, you think that you have learned it but go back once again right there can be many ways in which the same thing can be represented like uh, different english terms you can use for a certain word right so uh, understanding through some examples will be beneficial and also you will get differences between types of specifications so data uh, remembering and recollecting concepts also is necessary experimental result based questions like for example in autonomous what happens in the tunicates if you transplant one part if you separate the cells what will be the result or else in sea urchin how the plutus larva is formed if you separate the cells in early development then how the cell specifications are done these experimental result based questions you should be able to interpret about the result if they give you an experiment and even this historical perspective which scientists did upon what experiment like uh, Wilhelm Rocks what did he find out what did he work with Dresch how he worked with this uh, sea urchin embryos um, uh, the so amphibian embryos you should all know uh, what their work ultimately gave rise to Speeman what work they did and what it proved to be right so these things must be clear Next important topic is fertilization. The topic such as gametogenesis uh, is not that important but yes you can uh, have a little bit idea about the different stages and chromosome numbers and all that but fertilization you must have an idea of the fusion of egg and sperm in model organisms like sea urchin, amphibian and mammals. Not only that, uh, other processes like uh, capacitation or acrosomal reaction, cortical reaction, right? So these uh, things, uh, uh, the events in the sequence, what are the se events in sequence, what happens after what and what molecules are involved, these things you must be aware of. Blocks to polyspermy, yes, you have the slow block, the fast block. What is the mechanism? Like in fast block, if you have depolarization of membrane, then it is because of which ions coming inside the cell. If it is slow block, then when does it happen? In which organisms you have slow block? Or uh, which molecule triggers the slow block? Okay, that leads to what process? These all must be clear. Terms such as capacitation, acrosomal reaction, cortical reaction, whatever terms are involved with this entire process must be aware of what type of questions are asked yes you will get graph based questions here 
especially on slow block and fast block they will give you the membrane depolarization graphs even in slow block regarding the signaling process uh, uh, how which molecule increases calcium increases in cell or decreases inside the cell so they can give you some quantitative bar type of questions and ask you the result and as i mentioned you must know events uh, because you can get arranging the events uh, of fertilization in sequence so you should know which comes after what direct questions about the molecules involved like what molecule binds to which receptor if it, you are talking about chemo attraction in fertilization or uh, which are the chemo attractants like rizact spiract in sea urchin or if you are talking about the membrane fusion happening between uh, the sperm plasma membrane and egg plasma membrane which are the fusogenic proteins like binding uh, or uh, you have uh, this zumo juno which all molecules are involved you can be asked about third important topic is types of eggs and various cleavage patterns okay so you must know uh, the classification of eggs based on amount of yolk and distribution of yolk like a lecithal uh, or mesolecithal or mega lecithal depending, uh, depending upon the amount and also the distribution like telolecithal where it is it is at the one end or centrolecithal it is present in the center of the egg concepts like this and based on that the cleavage divisions will also matter if you have lot of yolk then it will not divide completely then you will have meroblastic cleavage so you must know the subtypes of meroblastic cleavage also like discoidal cleavage superficial cleavage and even holoblastic also you have radial rotational bilateral all these terms must be aware to you what type of question you will get you can get diagram based question they can give you the different types of eggs and ask you to recognize them or they can show you the type of uh, cleavage division and they can ask diagram based or even direct questions also they can ask uh, like in, in this particular organism what kind of cleavage is there amphibians have what type of cleavage like that match the following questions are also very common from this area like which type of cleavage and which representative organism will be having so even for each of the subtypes you should be knowing right for tunicates have okay holoblastic cleavage but exactly which type of holoblastic cleavage like mammals have rotational holoblastic cleavage so uh, these complete terms must be known to you fourth important topic early development in model organisms so this will include the cleavage division patterns and gastrulation in sea urchin sea elegans amphibians chicks mammals and drosophila you should be focusing on the important cells genes molecules involved in the process uh, like for example in drosophila you must know all the types of maternal zygotic genes which are involved and that too with the detailed process of their function if you are talking about the uh, gastrulation part you must know what is the role of micromeres in sea urchin in sea elegans what are the cells called as like ab cell p1 cell as the uh, as the zygote is dividing they are forming two types of cells so which cells are those okay so whatever information you can get unit 5 is a theoretical subject you might say but again it is interesting if you read it like a story book these won't be so difficult to remember right and along with that this is a, a connected topic axis formation in the in all those model organisms like how is the dorsal ventral axis formed what is the basis anterior posterior axis formation like if you take in amphibians the role of what is the role of beta catenin bmp nodal and then organizer regions pimen organizer right in uh, uh, mechanisms which are involved with that and also the pattern formation like in chick what will the primitive streak do what is hensen's node and even in mammals and zebra fish also they can ask and in fact they will sometimes give comparative questions also like last year there was a question where amphibian axis formation and chick axis formation they were compared so what is uh, this part in amphibian it has similar function to what part in chicks they gave a tabulated form where they gave different regions in amphibians and in chicks and you are supposed to match the following like for example spimen organizer in amphibian corresponds to what in the chicks like that you have to match it along with the role what roles they are playing in their axis formation right so what type of questions will ask as i said these are the most important sections of the syllabus and it will be vast also since you have to study individual 
individually for all the organisms and all types of questions can come especially pay attention to the transplantation experiment based questions and mutation and analysis questions if you mutate this gene or mutate this molecule i was talking about that right bmp or wnt or beta catenin if you uh, mutate beta catenin if you over express Uh, or if you inhibit beta catenin to be uh, to enter the nucleus so these all what ultimately it will result in transplantation if you transplant the micromeres which are uh, the um, organizers in sea urchin if you transplant it from the vegetal pole to the animal pole then what will be the outcome of that experimental result what will be the uh, embryo what will it lack in or what will be the Uh, outcome right concept and process based and even diagram based also they might ask you to identify the molecules in a signaling process or even in a sequence of axis specification next important topic is limb formation and regeneration you, you, you should know in vertebrates uh, what are the roles of the different genes which are available hox genes or else apical ectodermal ridge fibroblast growth factor what each one of them do what they activate what they inhibit and on sequence also in different subtypes also fgf also you have different types each role you must be knowing and experimental datas like if you uh, uh, take out the aer then what will happen if you put two aer then what will happen if you put a different kind of mesenchymal cell then what happens if you replace it with the fibroblast uh, growth factor bead then what will happen so all these experiments have already been done all you have to do is you should know what are the outcomes right and limb regeneration this is also important especially in amphibians uh, some certain differences are there like if you cut it at the proximal end that what will happen if you cut at the distal end then what will happen uh, and which uh, uh, what are the sequence of events uh, which cells are the source of the regeneration so these type of questions are also important neurulation and neural development is the next important topic yes you must know the types like primary neurulation secondary neurulation then they will also ask you about the different stages like for example first the neural crest cells uh, first the neural fold will be formed then the notochord or where it is present neural tube where it is present whether it is ventral to the notochord or dorsal to the notochord then neural crest cells will appear what this neural crest cells will give rise to so these stages are important molecules regions or genes involved so these are all the genes right um, i means these are the all the regions you must be knowing the regions of these things and uh, bmp signaling happens over here so that is about the molecules which are involved and what role they play in that particular process another question that uh, came last year was comparison in chicks and mammals they will ask the neurulation process like what uh, uh, what happens in the chicks and what happens in the mammals what is the difference next important topic is vulva development in c elegans yes most of the time you must have already seen the question in the question paper at least one vulva question is there almost every year right what you are supposed to know which cells are involved in the signaling process it's basically a phenomenal uh, it's a very important phenomena in uh, in developmental biology by studying which scientists have found out a multitude of processes and they have uncovered a lot of details right so anchor cells valval precursor cells what are their roles how they are formed what are the signaling events which are involved like um, Uh, which cell gives signal to what cell what is the signal name what is the receptor name and also mutation and analysis if you remove that cell then what is the outcome if you over express that ligand what will happen if you if you inhibit that transcription factor what will happen so basically the entire sequence they will ask you right uh, in uh, overall mutational means they will ask you over expression under expression inhibition uh, double negative mutant recessive dominant so little bit of genetic mutations idea should also be there with you another important topic is sex determination in drosophila many a times they will ask question regarding this what is the basis of male and female determination like how in mammals you have x and y chromosomes so here the uh, the uh, the basis is a ratio 
ratio of x is to autosomes so you must know that what the, if the ratio is more than uh, 1 if the ratio is uh, 0 0.5 if the ratio is somewhere in between then what will happen all this you must know something about dosage compensation then the roles of the molecules such as uh, uh, sex lethal transformer genes no, double sex what are their significant roles and even there is alternate splicing involved uh, because of which male and female determination is done so uh, ensure that entire process is known to you and definitely do practice some questions also based on that okay last is plant developmental biology yes uh, you should focus on topics such as double fertilization leaf development then meristems and their transition to flowering complete floral development that is including abc mod model of development and uh, you sh uh, you should also know the genes involved in embryogenesis in arabidopsis anterior formation of root apical meristem shoot apical meristem and also the flowering process as i mentioned vernalization in flowering floral organ identity genes so these are some common things that uh, most of the time are asked in rotation in the in the exam paper and the last mention i want to say is about signaling pathways in development okay because many signaling pathways uh, will come time to time in different processes such as sonic hedgehog pathway notch delta pathway then very important WNT beta catenin pathway right so as you all know there is a signal molecule involved receptor involved some uh, secondary messengers involved some uh, transcription factors involved and there will be some cellular response this is the basic thing of any signaling pathway so for all this you must focus on the ligand name receptor name secondary messenger transcription factor what happens after what and what are the outcome of activation and inhibition of those molecules so this is also goes hand in hand with unit 4 so along with unit 4 other other signaling pathways ensure that you also know about the signaling pathways in development that's all biotechnicians i hope this video was helpful to you if yes do let me know in the comment section thank you everyone for your listening